Hi, this session is presented by the Kubernetes IoT Edge Working Group. This is about using Kubernetes for Edge applications. I'm Steve Wong, a tech lead of the Working Group. I work on Kubernetes and a few other open source projects as an employee of VMware. Hey, my name is Dan. I'm an uh, engineer at Red Hat. Uh, been doing a lot of IoT and edge computing in the last couple of years, and also a, a, a lead of the, this working group. We'll give contact information and a link at the end, but here's the agenda. We're going to start with a quick overview of what the exact definition is of edge applications for the purposes of this talk. Then we're gonna move on to an introduction to some techniques and open source tools that are really useful when using an event-driven architecture at Edge. Hopefully you'll like this talk, and if you do, we'll wrap up with details on how you can become a member of the Kubernetes IoT Edge Working Group, where we host ongoing discussions on subjects like this talk. For the scope of this talk, when we say Edge application, we're not confining ourselves to just the software that runs on individual edge devices. Sure, there's software there, but if you're interested in getting Kubernetes involved, we're going to assume that you've got multiple devices involved, but are also using containerized software at some location, perhaps multiple locations that could be a high level gateway, regional tiers, or even a global tier. Our definition of an edge application is the big picture where you've got software interacting from various locations simultaneously. So that if this is what you're setting out to deploy and manage, you have a need for data and control plane communication from edge devices up to higher level tiers. And you might also want support for edge node to edge node interaction as well. A lot of people have fallen in love with Kubernetes lately, and it is a great tool for orchestrating containerized apps, but it's also extensible as a control plane. The fact is that when it comes to some edge use cases, the devices simply have too little resource to run software in a container or as a Kubernetes worker node. Yes, if you've got Pies with four gig or now eight gig of memory, these are quite capable and you could turn these into Kubernetes worker nodes, but there are a lot of far tinier devices like Arduinos where memory is measured in low single digits of megabytes. We're going to talk about a technique that can invite the little devices to the party while still supporting containerized software running uh, in your higher level tiers uh, simultaneously. So in a simple form, an event-driven architecture looks like this. An event is a piece of information often used to communicate facts like measurements or commands like statements of intent. Functions and services consume events and it's up to these applications to decide what to do with the event. Events can be ignored, forwarded, stored, or transformed. In a time series of events, whether the events are measurements or commands, a newer one might make an older one irrelevant if a buildup occurs somewhere in a queue. Analysis of events might emit new events based on a transformation. In a distributed system, an event stream is a communication fabric. And when the apps and events flows are viewed together, this is actually a programming model. Event-driven architecture can be helpful because it encourages some good program development practices, loose coupling, independently maintainable components, and separation of concerns. A distribution layer can help organize things and maybe even offload things you might otherwise have to write yourself. An example here is a PubSub broker eliminating the maintenance of a distribution list from the duty of an event publisher. This is a metaphor. This is how a restaurant often works in the real physical world. There are various people involved shouting out combinations of desired state and notifications of state changes. You listen to what concerns you, you ignore the rest. So in this example, I've got a customer who shows up 
asking for a table for one for lunch, eventually getting assigned to a table, making an order, and the waiter passing along uh, details on that order into the kitchen. Let's take a look at an alternative flow of what a restaurant would look like with a microservice implementation. Uh, yes, I think you could get it to work, but at what long-term cost? What if the menu or table layout changes? What things have to get touched? Yeah, understand that many edge locations, devices often have various uncoordinated life cycles and business operations might change, maybe even seasonally. The loose coupled nature of event-driven architecture with independently maintainable components and separation of concerns can really be attractive at edge. By the way, I want to sh shout out to Simon Aubrey of ThoughtWorks for coming up with this uh, nice restaurant metaphor for describing how event-driven might work at edge. So event-driven can, can originate on devices below what I'm calling the Kubernetes uh, waterline. There are some very simple protocols like MQTT that can be implemented on things like Arduinos, particularly if you can afford to skip TLS. I know skipping TLS is risky sometimes, but maybe you already live with unencrypted traffic operating on localhost with, you know, within an individual system. So this concept is nothing new. By skipping encryption, there is risk. But if you're connecting isolated devices that are not connected to the internet with some semblance of physical security, maybe this is an affordable trade-off. The bottom line here is that there are solutions for very low-end devices. And if you have larger devices, there are solutions with bigger feature sets. Uh, at gateway and higher tiers, you're likely to have plugins to support uh, all the various open source tooling available available for eventing, and you can probably afford to turn on full security. So here are a few uh, words of advice that I've discovered out there uh, with regard to designing an, an event-driven architecture for Edge. Um, view your, when, when you persist events, view them as a persistence of a replayable stream history. Uh, you don't want the event consumers tied to specific producers. View your events as a record of something that has happened and so it can't be changed. You can't change history. Messages on common delivery platforms often have certain characteristics and there are certain things you should do and shouldn't do. Rules can be different across latency boundaries so that if you've got a failure domain and a latency domain, you can do things that maybe you should avoid when you're crossing those boundaries. Synchronous might be okay within a boundary, but really that's an anti-pattern when you're crossing a big latency chasm. Thank you, Steve. So uh, one of the answers to, to uh, serverless, uh, to event-driven architectures in, in the Kubernetes land is, uh, is uh, k-native eventing specifically. Uh, k-native eventing is, is all about, uh, yeah, uh, 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 hooking up our k-native services with, with appropriate uh, event sources. So this diagram basically ex explains it in, in a, in a, in a, uh, most uh, simple way. So basically, we, we have a source of our events which have a sync, and that sync goes to to, uh, to uh, appropriate service. Uh, also, one more important detail here uh, is our cloud events, and and the cloud events uh, provides uh, a, a structure to to our events. So basically, adding all the metadata that that we need. Uh, to, to describe our events and, and to have some consistency uh, uh, within our, our serverless ap ap applications. Uh, and from that consistency uh, uh, comes accessibility because then we can uh, create an APIs in, in, a, in a lot of different, different languages and, and you know, port our, our, our solutions and, and our, our services or our functions uh, to different, different environments. 
uh, here we can see see one of the example uh, where where a, a cloud event basically adds adds uh, uh, some metadata and and the data to the to the picture. Uh, how this looks in, in practice is something that that, that we'll uh, demo at the end of, at the end of this talk. So basically, uh, what we have here is uh, an edge location which run in uh, Steve's home which contains a, a, a PAHO MQTT broker and, and the small devices that, that are connected to that broker uh, and sending, sending uh, their telemetry use, using MQTT. What we will do, uh, we will use a, a camel K uh, uh, and then connect to that, that broker, basically uh, getting all these MQTT messages, uh, converting them into the cloud events and, 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 uh, and, and pushing them to our sync and in this demo the sync will be simple event display service which will log these cloud events uh, to, uh, to the console. Uh, Camel K uh, uh, originates from the uh, Apache Camel uh, pro project which provides uh, a very rich uh, uh, framework for, for doing uh, enterprise integrations and the Camel K is basically a, a, a K native uh, 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 in implementation or adaptation of, of all the camera components. And as we can see here, we can use any of the available uh, hundreds of, of camel uh, uh, connectors uh, to connect to different external systems and, and con um, create, uh, convert them automatically to, to the uh, K-native inventing sources. Uh, if you go to the next slide, we, we can see how the, the K-native uh, uh, K-native uh, uh, architecture evolves because you know hink, uh, hooking one source to, to one service is easy enough but but uh, but not enough to, to support all the use cases that's where we can uh, bring in the the the, the uh, uh, concept of uh, channels and and with with sending uh, uh, an event from the source to the channel we can now have multiple multiple uh, services uh, subscribing uh, to the channel and, and receiving all these events. Channels uh, can uh, be backed by different uh, source, uh, different uh, persistence uh, 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 techniques. So in, in memory channels, we, we have uh, traditionally uh, often use uh, Kafka channels backed by, by the, uh, the, the Kafka broker, which provides a, a really, really good solution uh, 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 for for uh, implementing uh, uh, IoT, MQTT solutions on, on, on serverless. Uh, extending this concept even further, uh, on the next slide, we, we can see uh, the, the concept of, of, uh, of uh, 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 K-native eventing brokers, which basically uh, uh, function in a similar way as, as, uh, as the channels. The only uh, thing is that instead of the su subscriptions, uh, now we are defining different triggers uh, for the broker that, that will that will uh, uh, push events to, to different uh, different services. And the only difference is that for the triggers we can we can add uh, a different kind of filters, so that that we can say that that we are interested in only a certain type of of of, of cloud events while while we doing while we doing this. And finally, if, if we take all this into the consideration, on the next slide, we can see a little bit uh, uh, evolved scenario where, where we can, with, with, with this uh, kind of architecture, we can support multiple things. So we can have a, we, we, can, we can support scenario that, that we will, uh, demo soon where we have a, a small uh, small embedded uh, devices connecting over non-TLS to the local PAHO broker on the edge side and then ha having uh, having uh, camel MQTT converting uh, subscribing to the broker converting those to, to the to the to the services and uh, uh, to the cloud events and sending it to the channel but we can also uh, imagine that we can provide uh, a, a new components uh, naming MQTT broker source that, that would act to the external systems as an MQTT broker 
and where we can uh, allow more powerful devices which can support TLS to connect directly to the cloud, to, to, this, uh, to this source, which will also uh, transform these encrypted messages coming from the devices into, into appropriate cloud events and sending them uh, to the channel. The channel could be backed by, by Kafka, uh, providing all the, 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 the persistence and reliability that, that we would need in, in such a solution, and then push these to, to different, uh, different services. So event display service, which is like most basic one that, that we can imagine that can be used just, just for debugging pur purposes. But most commonly, you will push this to some kind of InfluxDB or Prometheus uh, uh, backed by a, a Grafana dashboard to, to have more better ob observability and, and be able to create different dashboards where, where you can where you can see see all this data. So this is uh, a, a call for, for action uh, on, on the next slide and something that, that we can uh, we, we can uh, uh, try to solve uh, uh, in the in the in the working group and and trying to to make MQTT, which is the default IoT uh, uh, messaging protocol of a first class citizen in the K native eventing world. Uh, this is you know all all the examples shown here is is just the tip of the iceberg uh, uh, iceberg uh, showing how things could work, but th there's a lot of things that that usually in this kind of systems needs to be solved like uh, device security and and uh, sending commands back to devices we can provide a, a lot of integration with the existing iot platforms like eclipse hono or aws or azure offerings in, in this area uh, provide an easy way to, to to run all this using different clis and, and uis and and pro provide uh, some of these services out of the box that that you know people can get really really quickly get started with with uh, with IoT on 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 a, on a on a platform like like this, and finally uh, 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 do something uh, uh, and extend, extending uh, a solution like this to to the multi cloud or or let's say edge edge nodes uh, 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 environments using using uh, uh, something like uh, like uh, a scupper. And if, if you're interested in, in that topic, I would suggest you to, to take, a look, uh, take a look at the recording or the video of, of, the, of, of uh, another session by, by my colleague Ted, which is happening at, at the same time as, as this one, which uh, explains a little bit more of, of how, how serverless uh, uh, workloads can, can be pushed from, from the edge to, to the cloud, to the different clouds uh, di uh, and different serverless uh, uh, deployments. So for the end, I, I would like to do uh, to, to go back and, and do a simple demo of, of, of all this. So let me just quickly share my screen and, and, and try to try to do that. Uh, Steve, I, I'm not allowed to. So here we, we are going going back uh, to the to the original idea, of having one source and one sync, and and, and con connecting them uh, via uh, uh, cloud events. As I said, uh, uh, our service is is a, is a very simple, uh, I think, the simplest possible K-native service that, that we, we could have. It's named Camel Event Display, and and uh, it uses uh, the event display image. So what will what this image will do? It, it will just receive events on, on its serving, serving endpoint and and uh, log them uh, to the console. Uh, and our source uh, will be. Uh, uh, let me do this like this, so it's it's a, it's it's visible better. So we, we're using Camel Source. Uh, K-native uh, eventing uh, come with, with a lot of uh, out-of-shelf shelf, uh, sources, and Camel Source is is one of them. And as I explained earlier, uh, once you have a Camel Source, you, you can use different different Camel components to 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 connect to to uh, different external systems. So right here we are using the, the Paho uh, uh, Paho uh, component. Which will uh, connect using the Paho MQTT client to, to a, a broker. Uh, this is just a template because uh, we don't want to give uh, 
Steve's MQTT broker details to the public, but uh, it will connect to the Steve's MQTT broker running at, at his home uh, using appropriate username and password and connect to, to one MQTT topic. In this case, topic is aw slash data slash temperature 1f. Uh, uh, assuming it's a it's a temperature temperature sensor and uh, that in, in this camel source we can see that this is uh, this is a definition of, of, of our source uh, in in the down part here we, we we see how we can do a definition of the of the sink and for the sink we, we can see that we are co directly calling the the service and and the service will be the the aforementioned cam, camel event display display service so to not disturb demo gods i have all this uh, running in, um, in in advance and uh, what we can see in in this other other uh, window is that uh, we can pick in, pick up now the 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 logs uh, from the from uh, coming from the from the uh, from our uh, from the pod uh, serving serving this event, and as as we can see, uh, these events are uh, MQTT messages are now uh, 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 changed to different uh, to, to appropriate cloud events. Uh, we can see uh, some of the, the the metadata, the headers of the cloud events, like type, which meaning that it's generated by the camel component, uh, from which source it's coming, the 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 the, the time step of the event, and then finally uh, finally the, the data. So the data now is uh, seventy four point twelve Fahrenheit degrees, I I, I assume, uh, and. Uh, if we go back to the to the definition of our source, what else you can see here is that uh, I have uh, commented out a, a different thing. So in, instead of going to directly to the service, we, we could go to the in-memory channel or Kafka channel or or, or some kind of uh, broker uh, defined by, by the K native infrastructure and implement all these other uh, other architectures that, that that we saw on on the slides on on the slides before. So so this this is an example of, of another service. Uh, so uh, basically re reading the events coming from the Steve's MQTT broker, uh, pushing them to the to the uh, InfluxDB. And, and then having a, a Grafana dashboard connected to that input TB and, and showing showing this uh, uh, this temperature in the in the real time. So if you find content like this useful, we want to invite you to become a member of the Kubernetes IoT Edge Working Group. We're not really writing code on Kubernetes, but we are focused on applying Kubernetes with open source tools to Edge and IoT use cases. We have online Zoom meetings every two weeks at alternating times to accommodate members in different time zones as shown here. There's one series uh, earmarked for North America, the other one for uh, Eastern Europe and China. We encourage a member-driven agenda. So once you join, you can nominate topics for presentations or discussions. We're also operating a group channel on the Kubernetes Slack. So we can be contacted using our GitHub IDs. That same ID is my Twitter handle. Okay, so these are our GitHub handles and you can use that to reach out to us or we're also available on the Kubernetes Slack. You see here on this slide, the link uh, in the SCED site to get a copy of this presentation deck. Yeah, Take, thanks for joining us. For this and session. we're going to hang around for a few minutes to for Q and A. And at this point, I'm going to turn it back over to the CNCF administrative staff.